Hey, everybody, uh, if you're home watching this, uh, we're happy to have you. Um, I, I just want to say a couple things. Um, we're going to do some housekeeping at the end. So uh, we plan on ending this at about 11 o'clock <clears throat> for everybody watching. And then we'll get into some housekeeping with Saks Realty stuff and um, things like that. So, you know, the theme here is really breakthrough and rise up. Um, while we're going through this tremendous uh, challenging time, so many of us have been really preoccupied over the last couple of weeks, uh, three weeks. And um, I know I spoke with one of our agents yesterday and, uh, you know, he had indicated that uh, for the last two weeks hasn't really been a whole lot going on. So it's kind of hard since we've never been faced with anything like this. It's kind of hard to think about being salesy or closing deals. I mean, we have in the real estate industry, we have deals um, that were on the books when all of this kind of hit the fan. And, you, you know, so now we're trying to kind of wind things, um, you know, down with what was in the hopper. And really, um, we've seen a major, major slowdown for obvious reasons, because the mines um, you know, the thinking of our clients and consumers and ourselves have really been <clears throat> what the heck's going on? How do I survive? How do I not get sick? So guys, you know, um, we're going to talk about some real positive stuff over the next hour. So I can't encourage you enough um, to stay on, try and, you know, stay focused and stay on the whole time. Um, I think that you're going to, no matter whether you're um, working for somebody else or you have your own company, yeah, there's going. This is going to help you get through. The idea here is for the next three weeks. So, even though we think that this time is going to be much longer, I mean, realistically, um, I, I think this is going to be something that is going to go into June. Um, obviously, you know, um, no one knows. But the goal here is that today's uh, workshop gets us through the next three weeks in a very positive way and, you know, gets us out of our funk, um, helps us to kind of redefine ourselves. So, you know, helps us break through and then rise up. So we'll go ahead and get started. <clears throat> so really, Sax Realty, we have our sales meetings, usually in person, the first and third Tuesday of every month. And we run it from like 10 to 12 and we go over house cleaning stuff up front and then we kind of get into a topic and and then a discussion and we're going to jump right into the topic but we have our sales meetings open and what that and we started that about a year ago and just about every sales meeting we have somebody from a different industry uh some people come again and again and we welcome that and and one of the reasons why i do that is because i've been a self employed this is going into my 31st year of self employment and early on, before I really had any employees, you know, I really had nowhere to go for encouragement on a regular basis or any kind of sales meeting. So I had to go to videos or actually audio tapes and things like that to try and, you know, get pumped up or try and get, you know, focused or back on track. Um, so there are a lot of people that are self-employed. Uh, that are just like a real estate agent, you know, you're really you're on your own, unless you have a team, or, you know, you have an assistant or somebody that you're managing. So, you know, where do you go to, to have a sales meeting? So that's one of the reasons why we've opened it up. Now with everything the way that it's changed over the last couple of weeks, um, we're going to probably go live on all of our sales meetings, even when we get back together in sort of like a classroom or a conference room environment, hopefully where we're sitting next to one another again, and that won't be weird, um, or we won't be taking people's temperatures as we're walking in the room. Um, so anyway, so the idea here, guys, is three weeks to break through and rise up. <clears throat> now, we're going to get back to a lot of sort of uh, fundamentals in the next hour, um, and we're going to take it through a three-step process. One, and hopefully everybody can see the screen. I want you also to realize and know that we are going to make this entire PowerPoint available for you in a download 
and something that, you know, no matter what platform you're watching this on, if you're joining us through YouTube, hi, Facebook, hello, um, we definitely would like for you to like and subscribe um, to whatever platform it is that you're watching because we, we do want to bring more of this type of content to you in weeks to come. So let's get back to basics, which is is really um, step number one. So I want to let everybody know if you don't have a pencil or a pen and a pad of paper, I want to encourage you right now to do that because we really dive in here and we're about to reinvent ourselves. So you're going to want to take some notes. So uh, number one, back to basics. So we're going to talk a little bit about your why, um, your story and back on track. So when we're talking about your why, we're really talking about why you chose what it is that you do. So if you're self-employed, obviously at one point in time, you thought it was a great idea. So first and foremost, your why would be, you know, you wanted to do something. Um, if you applied for a job or you're working somewhere, hopefully it was something that you were interested in that you wanted to do. So we're going to go with that. Um, you know, if you're really considering what you're doing, well, then that might be another conversation um, that you should be having with yourself. And you're actually going to walk through that in the next hour. So let's talk about why. So Simon Sinek, uh, he wrote a book that uh, is called Start With Your Why. And one of his famous quotes that he says out of his book is people don't buy what you do or how you do it. They buy why you do it. So when we're talking about why it is that you became a real estate agent or a loan officer or contractor, um, you know, there was a reason why you started and you were really excited about it at one point in time. Maybe that was before you, um, you know, accumulated debt or before you went through COVID-19 and you're wondering how you're going to get through this. Um, what we want to do is really be focusing on your why, write your why down again. Um, let's get re-excited about your why and that you may really operate and live on purpose. So, you know, um, if, if we get up every single day and we live on purpose it really adds to our motivation, doesn't it? I mean, when you remember, I mean, if you're going away on vacation at somewhere, you know, you're really excited to go away. The night before, you're really having a hard time going to sleep. You know, you're you're thinking about it. You're doing some last minute preparations. And then when you finally do fall asleep and the alarm clock goes off or you wake up, you're really excited. You're motivated. So really, that's what we want to talk about, you know, getting back to our why we went into business or we're doing what we do. And how do we get re-motivated again to where you're so excited about what you're working on today and tomorrow that you just get up out of bed and put your feet on the floor and go, wow, this is great. I'm so excited to get into today. So um, one of the things, so we're going to break this over the next three weeks and number one is you're going to work on this for the next week. And there's a little timeline at the end. And, um, and again, this is going to be downloadable, but take some notes. But let's talk about your why and, and your main character. So the main character is you or me in this situation. So we all have our story, you know, and it starts back it, as far as we can remember childhood. Our story defines us. Our story makes us who we are. Um, a lot of it, you know, doesn't have to, ha you know, maybe, maybe you're not happy with some things that happen in your story. Um, and there's certain things that you talk about and certain things that you don't talk about. But there are certainly through your life, your story has defined you in some way. Um, it doesn't mean that you can't change where you are, but it really has a lot to do with why you're good at what you do and why you chose what you do. So, you know, maybe you were the one that was the leader when you were young. Maybe you were the pack leader. Maybe you were the one that helped people navigate through things. Maybe you were the one that had a lot of empathy through the years and you reached out to people and you were able, you were a good ear, you were a great listener. Um, or maybe you were, you know, um, through getting through your story, you needed to be surrounded by people, a good network of people. So, you know, we want to spend some time thinking about our story, thinking about, you know, 
why we chose what we did and what part of our character made us really great at doing what we chose to do. And, and really right now, guys, we're going to write a new chapter, you know, this COVID-19, I mean, everybody is concerned, you know, we have no idea when we have, you know, health officials and doctors saying, Hey guys, we're in uncharted water. We have no idea what's going on. We don't know how long it's going to last. Um, I can tell you guys, 31 years I've been self-employed. I can tell you that there's been uncertainty. I've had, you know, situations where I had financial problems through the years. Um, you know, I had people that didn't pay my bill that owed me a lot of money in contracting. Um, you know, raising a family, uh, being the only main provider of income, you know, going through major economic downturns. 2008 was horrible and being in the real estate industry and being a builder and developer and, you know, not seeing that coming either, guys. You know, we could sit down and say when, when we started in 2020 and we were having our New Year's resolutions, no one saw this coming. Um, no one saw the 2008 coming either. You know what? You could look at the indicators and say, oh, yeah, we were expecting this. We were planning this. But you, nobody saw it when I got up every day and was shaving. I didn't say, well, this would be the last great house that I build um, where I make money or, you know, that, you know, there would be negotiations on the hoods of cars today, but not tomorrow. You know, we didn't see it coming. We ignored the fact that there were possibilities out there because we're busy living in our world. So I can tell you that we've never been at COVID-19 before. We have been in situations in our life where we had to overcome. And guys, the ones that are going to win right now are the ones that make the opportunity. Now, this is going to hit some people a lot harder than it does others. You know, this may hit your family members. It may, you know, really hit home and affect you. So I'm not trying to make light of the situation at all. I know that, you know, it's real. But what I do know is that we still need to produce. We still need to help people get through this. We still need to rise up as leaders and, and, and show that we'll make this and believe it. Um, so now is the time to dig in. The difference is going to be when this clears or we get back to some kind of normalcy, will you have made the most of these times? Will you have focused and reinvented yourself and got back to business basics again so that you come out better than you were going in? So one of the things in this first week, besides, you know, really going over our why and, and our backstories and, and, and taking that pencil and to paper and really thinking and diving in, which isn't easy to do because sometimes, you know, thinking um, makes us remember things that we don't want to think about, uh, but we need to work through it. So you know, one of the things that we're going to do in this first week is we're going to take an inventory. And what I mean by that is really think about your business and your current business. What business do you have right now? Um, maybe it's business that you've lost. Maybe it's business that's been tabled. But let's take an inventory of that so that you have an idea of any income that you have on the table or that's been tabled and that you can plan on. And then we're going to be working on our budgets and things like that. But also your current client list. Take an inventory of your client list. You know, who have been your customers that have been really happy with you? You know, who are the ones that maybe weren't so happy with you? Let's take an inventory. Maybe we need to start looking at why. You know, what was it that um, that we did that wasn't good? Maybe when we got busy, we forgot the personal touch. You know, maybe, um, you know... You know, we did some things that are right. So in taking an inventory and you know, writing down your clients, what your experience and your relationship is, um, and then really our sphere of influence. And we hear a lot of people say, you know, oh, you should have a sphere of influence. You should start with your 100 people. Well, a lot of us have over a thousand people on Facebook, um, Instagram, things like that. I'm talking about taking an inventory of the real people that you have, your real sphere of influence and making it 
you know, a list of them that you can be reaching out through right now, that you could be showing them that you care, uh, that you can be understanding what they're going through, um, getting back to basics, right? From the day that you started and you go, okay, now what do I do? I'm going to start this business. I'm mortgaging my house. I'm getting loans. I was taking inventory. Um, and then really identify your support network. So your support network, guys, is your family. It's your friends. You know, the ones that you call your friends that are your friends. Maybe it's only five. Maybe it's only three. But these are your network of your support. The people that you go to when you need help. The people that you're there when they need help. Um, in this situation, who would you go shopping for? You know, who would you care enough about that you would, in all of this craziness, risk yourself to go shopping for? That, that's your your real support network. And then really the professional services. Now's the time, guys. Who is it that you need in your business and in your life? Your accountants, your lawyers, um, your coach, uh, your professional network of people. Maybe it's your referral network. Um, you know, time to take an inventory of, of those people, because I can tell you, even for myself, there are a lot of people, guys, that I use, that I have around because it's convenient, not because they're the best. And right now you need the best. You need to align the best people in your professional network that can help you get things done, that you feel confident that you're going to make part of your team and they're not going to disappoint you. So, you know, whoever that is, maybe it was an accountant that let you down, but you just say, oh, you know what? I'm just going to continue using them because it's convenient. Guess what, guys? Not now. Not moving forward. You're going to find a new accountant. Maybe it's that lawyer that you say, you know what? I'm calling this guy, but he's cheap. So he doesn't really give me the best, best advice. And maybe I know more than he does. But guess what? Not anymore, guys not post COVID-19, not going during through this thing right now, not going through one of the most challenging times you've ever been in and you want to be better. You want to come out ahead of the game, stronger with more business and more of a leader. You're going to have to pick the best people. Now's the time to take inventory. You know, let's get rid of those people. Let's start interviewing new people. And then really, what do you expect? Um, you know, if you want to expect great things, you must give and deliver great things. You know, I've spoken about it before, probably over the last 20 years. You're the CEO of you. You know, so we're just going to recap this really quickly. Your family, your kids, your spouses, your significant others your best friends, the closest people in your life, they're investing in you. You know, if you get up every single day and you're a provider and you need to, whether even if you're not working outside the house, you're working inside the house, taking care of the children, you know, everybody's counting. People are counting on you. The people that are closest, they're invested in you. So what's happening is, you know, are you do, you have to make sure you're doing the right job to deliver the best for your shareholders. You know, if you were hiring you, would you keep you around? You know, would you really be the one um, or would you replace you with somebody that you think would do a better job? So when you're running you and you're running your business and you're trying to get people through this, you have to rise up here, guys. You, we've got to be the leaders. We have to be stable. We have to be strong. And we have to, you know, really make sure that we're giving our shareholders, you know, the best return on their investment. So, Number two, we're going to spend a week on this. This is critical thinking. Now, I can tell you, when you started your business, you may not have been doing critical thinking. I mean, it's amazing how many of us jump into business or go to work doing something, and we expect great results. We expect to get customers. We expect them to give us their business, their hard-earned money. If you're working for somebody, you expect to get raises, you expect to climb the corporate ladder, but really in expecting all of that, you may not be making sure that you're thinking about what you need to do to become more valuable, 
and to make sure that people are invested in, you know, and giving you what it is that you need to be at the top of your game, the top of your industry. So we're going to talk now about anticipating, um, which is going to need to be now we're thinking about we're in COVID-19. So now what we really need to be doing, you know, we were, I was talking with one of my agents yesterday and, um, we need to be thinking about what the mindset is of our client right now, our customer, because it's not about us and what we're thinking. We're thinking, oh my gosh, we need more business. Hopefully this is going to end soon so that I can pay my mortgage payment or my rent. But we're not really maybe thinking about what the consumer that's buying our product, our service, or that's investing in our brand. We may not be thinking really through where they are and whether our, we're essential in their mind, you know, whether they're, you know, I was talking with a contractor this morning that called me to check in and he said, you know, he has all these contracts on the books, but nobody wants him there because they're waiting until after this. And they say, he's an outside contractor. They're saying, well, we're waiting um, until all this clears. What they're really saying is we don't want to spend the money right now because we don't know how long this is going to last. And this is something that isn't essential yeah, we wanted to put the deck on the back of the house or, you know, we wanted to put the fence up in the yard or we wanted to install the swimming pool. But guys, we don't, what they're really saying is, you know, we're going to delay this and table this. So what can you be doing right now? And we're going to talk about how your business may be changing on things that you can anticipate on what they're thinking right now, how to reach out to them right now and open up that real communication, that line of communication so that you can be walking them through and helping to be who they're going to need when it comes down to whether they even decide whether they want what they thought they wanted. So number two, we're going to talk about critical questions and really critical decisions. So these guys are not going to be easy when we part from this meeting and you're studying this material and you're going to really spend <clears throat> the next three weeks going over what we're addressing right now. This is really, you're going to have to really think about this stuff and it's going to be tiring. It's going to be draining and you're going to really need to focus and dive in. <clears throat> and we avoid that sometimes. Let's talk about anticipation. So anticipating the market. I just found a neat story that I kind of want to go over. And it goes back to Swanson and Sons. Um, we've all heard of Swanson. I'm sure uh, they're still a you know a, 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 a producer of uh, frozen foods, and they start out as a poultry producer. And in 1953, they had a situation where they were stuck with 260 tons of frozen turkey, and they didn't have sufficient storage. And they were driving it around in these boxcars, um, you know, just kind of keeping it anywhere they could, uh, frozen and safe so that they didn't lose their product. And one of their salesmen, Jerry, um, and depending on where you read this story, you know, they call him an account executive or a company executive. He was a salesman. And Jerry was on a plane and a business trip. And... Um, and and he was watching the the stewardess was serving these meals and they were in these aluminum trays and they had these different compartments. And when he looked at that, he started thinking about how the television was becoming big in the house. And we all back in the day, the fireplace was the center of the room um, and and. You, we all sat around back then, not me, but our and my ancestors sat around the fireplace and the TV was now replacing the fireplace as where people were sitting around. They were watching TV. And he quickly saw where, you know, people would be eating in front of the TV or that the trend was going in that direction. And really, he thought, wouldn't it be cool if he took, you know, some turkey and some stuffing and some potatoes and in a tray like that and made it a TV dinner. Guys, after one year of implementing the TV dinner, they were the founder of the TV dinner, they actually sold more than 10 million within a year. 
uh, 10 million TV dinners and went on to in about a half a century later, they had sold over six billion TV dinners. So, you know, what's the next thing in your business? You know, well, you have to spend time thinking about that. And, you know, how one person, a salesman, created the TV dinner and the rest is history. Let's talk about, um, you know, more examples of anticipating. Um, Wayne Gretzky, if you're a hockey player, you know he played professional hockey for 20 years, um, 1979 to 1999. And if you ask any hockey fan, they'll tell you that he's probably one of the best of all time. And, you know, he, he, one of his famous quotes were, you know, good hockey player plays where the puck is. Um, a great hockey player plays where the puck is going to be. So, you know, in thinking and forecasting and, you know, thinking about your business and thinking how COVID-19 is going to change things, and it will, it is going to change things. I promise you, there are going to be some things that are happening right now. They're not going to go back to the way they used to be. So when we're thinking about our business, how do we think about where that puck is going to be, you know, in a month, in a month and a half, where it is right now, right? Because a good hockey player is playing where the puck is, but a great hockey player is going to be playing where, you know, and planning where the puck is going to be. Where's that shot going? And then really becoming a history buff. You know, now, what is it, guys? I mean, we got home delivery of groceries. We're really thinking that's a good idea right now since, since they're saying don't go in the grocery store. So did you know, I didn't know this, but in 1997, there was a company called homegrocer.com and they started in Washington State. And one of the biggest states that's hit, you know, one of the first hit with COVID-19 and they were the first online delivery, supermarket delivery service, 1997. I mean, that's kind of crazy, right? So, um, again, let's start thinking about, you know, your business, your next life cycle, <clears throat> whether, you know, you are in part and our agents are watching this or logged into Zoom, you might be watching whatever industry that you're in and you're watching our sales meeting, this affects you. So you know, what's the next life cycle for your industry? Let's talk about some things here. Uh, number one, how are the needs of your clients or customers changing? In our industry, let's think about commercial real estate. What I would be thinking about and what I am thinking about as a building owner is I'm thinking about what's gonna happen to my tenants? You know, what's going to happen if you're, you know, my commercial building, what's going to happen with my commercial tenants? You know, are they going to make it? Are they going to go out of business? Am I going to have vacancies? What businesses are going to be left? Who needs brick and mortar? What will the office rents be like? You know, what, what will, you know, how long is it going to take? Am I going to have to bait rents, you know, for my tenants that are living in residential properties, you know, that are living paycheck to paycheck? Am I eating the next three months? You know, these are things that, so if you're in the real estate business and this is your client, you should be taking this time to reach out to those people. You know, even if they're not your client, you know, I was talking to one commercial agent and we were talking about, you know, going through CoStar and finding all the business owners and, and, and reaching out to them and saying, guys, you know, I'm in this business, we're living this business. How can we be a resource? Do you want to talk? Don't assume that the conversation. Don't look at your client and, and put out a post or send them an email that assumes where they are. Ask them where they are and let them know what the possibilities might be. Are you a building owner that's been thinking about selling and now realizing, man, I may have been six months too late? Are you a building owner and your tenants aren't paying your rent and you're wondering if they're going to make it? Are you a building owner that knows that your building is, is really experiencing obsolescence and you're curious about who the next tenant may be? You know, are you a building owner that went from 30% occupancy, you know, vacancy to 100% vacancy? 
What are my options? These are the questions you can ask them, but don't assume the answer. What you can do is say, open, let's open it up to a conversation. You know, how can I, how can I that lives in my business, you know, be a resource for you right now in this on times of uncertainty to open up those airwaves, start building those relationships. And guys, if you're an insurance agent and you haven't touched base with your client, you know, maybe now you know that they might be shopping you, you know, so, you know, maybe don't assume that, but maybe the question is, you know, do we have the right coverage or should we be looking at reducing things to you know make things more affordable for you? Guys, take the time right now to know where your clients' minds are and what you need to be doing to make sure you're not losing that and that you're opening up to a new audience of potential business right now that's thinking it and their insurance agent or their real estate agent that they used in the past or you know their professional is not helping them with. What key enabling technologies are trying to disrupt your industry? Guys, let me tell you something. In our business, if you didn't think that Zillow was a major disruption before, guess what? They just grew enormously because maybe not now, but now people are going to use the internet more than ever because they're being trained to do so. So guys, how, what's, what industry <laughs> disruptors are out there right now? You know, what, what technologies are out there that are, you know, I had somebody called me up and they go, I had this great invention. I'm going to go to <clears throat> the developers and I'm starting to build this thing in my mind. And I'm going to hire people and they haven't even done a good enough job researching their other countries that have this technology that they're thinking about doing and you know so if you don't know what technologies are trying to disrupt your business now's the time you really need to know that you know what they are and what key insights are enabling these technologies um what, what do you think will stick you know if you dive into the technology possibilities maybe the disruptors are coming maybe they're not here now you know but how will that what what will be attractive in that to your client? And then really, because we're not trying to replace ourselves, but what we need to be mindful of is what's going on, what they're thinking about, so that we can decide what we can be doing that will still be unmet. You know, understand what these disruptors of these technologies, maybe they you're lucky enough that you have had Zillow in your world if you're in the real estate business. So now's the time to focus on what they haven't met. What is unmet by them using Zillow? You know, hey, Zillow, can't, a house can't sell a, another house itself. So, you know, that's one unmet that they haven't, you know, been able to accomplish. Um, they still can't go inside the house without a human being yet. So, you know, that's unmet, so these are technologies you got you have to focus on what what is happening right now how this will change the life cycle of your industry and really what you can be doing right now to make sure that you're focusing on the needs that will still be unmet and that you're communicating that you're developing that into your next cycle um and really, number five here on the screen, guys, is what would happen to your business if you don't change to meet the new demands? Guys, like two years ago, when I started Sax Realty, um, I knew that video, uh, you know, those of you that know me, I was in uh, video technology back in 2007. I had a platform called meetlocalbiz.com. Um, it failed miserably back then. Um, but when I went through the crash, um, my crash started happening as a contractor in 2006. I started looking for other things to do. I got into video technology. Who would have known that we'd be back into it now after my business failed in 2003? Um, but I was saying two years ago when I started Sax Realty, if you're not using video for your business, you will be, you know, skipped over. And this is pushing us into it. So when you're looking at what's changing the next cycle of your business, 
also identify what happens if you don't make changes. You know, if you just flat out say, I'm not going to do anything about it. Here's what I want to do and stay with me, guys. Do not leave me. This may be a little boring to you and to some, but I want you to understand the context of this video that I'm about to play, right? So hopefully I'm not going to have, I'm using kind of like, this is new technology for me at home and I'm like operating from different things. So I'm going to mute myself here and I'm going to play this short clip. If you want to know about what is now called the information superhighway, one of the people you want to talk to is Ray Smith. He is one of the players in this future world of computers and telephones and wireless and cable and motion picture studios, all of that coming together in some kind of convergence to deliver to your home all kinds of packages that you have not yet seen. Ray Smith is chairman and chief executive officer of Bell Atlantic. Tell me how you see the future. I mean, it t let us know from somebody who knows what the promise is, who knows what the pitfalls are, mm -hmm. who knows where the expectation may be greater than the reality and where the opportunity may be larger than we know. What's the feel as you see it? Well, here's what's happening. Um, we're in the process, and I say we, uh, in the communications industry. That's uh, companies like mine, Bell Atlantic, and cable companies, and software companies all coming together to create the great information engine of the 21st century. And what we mean by that is we now have the ability to store all of the information very cheaply, access it very easily, and make it available to every single person at a very low cost in a form that they can use it. So. Um, we'll be able to uh, produce the, oh, the most patient, the kindest, the most personal tutor to a child in his home using the television set. Uh, and at the, at the child's schedule, at the parent's behest, uh, and that will be able to be done uh, with the approval of the school board and the parents and, the, and, and so on in an entertaining, fun way. What, what's going to happen then? That child is going to learn tremendously. Let me talk about some of the things that people talk a lot about and sure. just get your feel on 500 channels <clears throat> is one of the things that got a lot of attention. I'm, maybe John Malone coined that term. I don't know who first used it. Is it a reality? Is it 500 channels people want to see? And what do they mean when they say 500 channels? Uh, well, and that was coined. Actually, John didn't coin it. Uh, he was saying, we're going to be able to use new techniques to have a lot more channels in the future. And a reporter said, like 500? And he said, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's about 500 channels. So he didn't go around saying, I'm no, going to deliver no. you 500 channels. However, we are going to be able to, to deliver just hundreds and hundreds, uh, in our case, about 395 to 500 channels up front. Mm -hmm. But the concept of channel will be uh, an archaic concept in the year 2002. Uh, in just five or six years... Eight you, years from now. You won't even think of channel. You're going to go about things not by turning a knob or clicking a clicker to go through uh, as a hunter-gatherer were trying right. to find uh, something that you like. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to be given opportunities to go through with a navigator, sort of a menu. Yeah. For uh, left brain types, they'll have a nice straightforward menu. For right brain types, they'll have a more creative way to find your way through the mall of information. Uh, but channels will not be of interest. It won't be, there'll be no difference between channel one and channel 99. That, what about networks? What about CBS, ABC, NBC, CNN? <clears throat> we won't be calling them networks. We'll be calling them services. And they are branded services. PBS and NBC and ABC and Fox will be branded services on this great grand menu that you will be able to select. So and you'd select the CNN service. You'd select the CBS service. What does this mean about a mass audience? Well, it, it's, it, it has stupendous implications for the consumer. Number one, they're going to have a lot more choice and convenience. Uh, I was born uh, and bred in Pittsburgh, and I spent a lot of time in Washington, D.C. I can't get the Steelers. Uh, the Steelers don't exist no in Washington. No sports channel and cable in Washington, D.C. No, they D. don't C. even mention my Steelers. And so uh, with this kind of superhighway, I'll be able to get them yeah. in Washington and when I want it.
Yeah. And not only when I want it, I'll be able to pause it when I get a phone but call. But don't you want it when it's actually being played? Sure, I do. Yeah. I would prefer it when it's played. And I can get it in this new system because yeah. it will be digitalized. This is one of the secrets, turned into zeros and ones right. that are easily stored and shipped. And so they'll be able to ship to my television yeah. set because I'm willing to pay for it. The Steelers games. This is not in 10 years. This is today. We'll be doing this in 1994. You'll be able to get all of the media that you want on your schedule when you want it. If it's live, you take it live. If you can't have it live, you pick the time. You'll be able to get repurposed things. This wonderful interview someday may be repurposed into <laughs> another form and yeah. made available for uh, the odd people who want to see me on television. <laughs> all right, guys. So hopefully uh, we got a thumbs up. Was it? We're good? All right. So, you know, guys, one of the things that, you know, and I, and I know it was a little slow towards the end, but, you know, one of the things that you have to realize, this was in 1994. You know, wow, how things have changed. You know, my daughter, my oldest daughter was, was born in 1994. She's 25, so 25 years ago. And um, if that wasn't, an example of anticipating where your business was going, you know, where the, where the curve was going. And this is a leader. I mean, guys, you, come on, the chairman of Bell Atlantic and then the chairman of became the chairman of Verizon communications. I mean, this sound like a guy that knew what he was talking about. 100%. I mean, he, he knew exactly where things were going. He was able to forecast guys, this is your business. You're no different than the chairman uh, the ex-chairman of Verizon, you know, it's in your mind. It's how you think of things. It's, it's deciding to dig in, which, what makes somebody extremely successful and, and somebody that struggles with business. You know, I can promise you it's the way that they dig in. It's the way that they anticipate. It's the way that they lead. Okay. So let's just talk about, you know, so we're still in week two here, guys. And this is now, you know, we're critical thinking. So we've gone over anticipating where our business is going, you know, <clears throat> how this is going to affect our business moving forward. Now we need to answer some really critical questions. Um, you know, what is the real potential for your business? So, you know, for some of us, I mean, we're real estate agents. What is the real potential? I mean, that's a pretty legitimate question. Is a thousand deals a year um, the real potential for your business? I mean, I don't know. Maybe you're saying, yeah, it is. But you have to identify that. If you're a loan officer, you know, what's the real potential for your business? If you're a contractor, what's the real potential for your business? You have to be honest with yourself. If you don't know what that is, where you are right now, yeah, you can adjust it, you can modify it, but we're talking about right now with the resources that you have. What is your big objective? I mean, guys, do you know what your big objective is? Um, maybe your big objective is to retire by 62. Maybe your real objective is to you know, build a huge team. You know, maybe your real objective is to have six vacation houses. What is your real objective of why you're doing your, your work? Um, and then how quickly can you obtain this objective? Is there anything that should be stopped or abandoned? You know, um, I know when we were talking about um, uh, with my agent yesterday, when we were addressing, you know, what, what he should be doing right now. Um, and the very first thing that we want to do is we want to go to something that is easy and um, that is going to take up time. And you have to really decide, is that something that you should just kick to the curb right now? Should you abandon that? Does that help you get to your big objective or is that just filling time and the easiest thing to do? Um, what human or financial resources do you need? You know, that's a big question. You know, can you do it all yourself? Do you need people in your, in your business? Um, do you need money? Can you do a lot of it with limited resources? Do you have access to resources? You know, um, what will you do with the wealth that you create? 
How are you going to save it? How will you reinvest it? Um, what is your plan for doing that? And you know, how bad do you really want your big objective? What are you willing to invest? How many hours are you willing to work in your business? You know, how much of your money are you willing to put back in? You know, when we have meetings sometimes and we look at agents and we go, guys, you know, you don't even have a pen. You don't have a, you know, a keychain. You know, have you invested anything in your business? Believe me, you're not fooling anybody. You know, um, you know, I spend like 14 or 15 bucks for every swell bottle. I had these swell bottles, but when I give it to people, it was well thought out. It says hydrate, you know, exercise, follow us on social media. You know, I give away a $15 swell bottle to somebody. I'm not telling you to give away a $15 swell bottle, but I'm saying if I give that bottle to somebody, somebody knows, damn, this guy is really serious. He just gave me a $15 or $30 in their mind because swell bottles are expensive. You know, so how much are you investing in your business? You know, really, um, how quickly can you achieve your big objective? And, you know, do you have the right people in the right position? You know, if you have a virtual assistant, do you need them? Are they the right virtual assistant? If you have a transaction coordinator, are they the right one? If you have an administrative assistant, are they the right one? Um how much does each one of your clients or customers need to spend for you to achieve your objective? Do you know what that is? If you say, I want to make, you know, a hundred thousand dollars next year or 70,000, whatever it is, you know, how many, you know, what market you're working in, how many clients do you, does that actually equate to? Because channeling it down and it will help you focus on what you have to do. It might be nice to do, you know, these great mass media broadcasts, but is it getting you, the amount of customers that you need. Maybe there's something else that you could be doing. And then really, um, is the world changing faster on the outside than you're changing on the inside? You know, we've been talking in video, we'll repeat it again. Or if you know that video is something that works and that is effective in your business, are you procrastinating? Are you moving at a slow pace that you need to step that up a little bit? Maybe you need to pick up those things that you're not, you feel you're lagging on. And really guys, the big question is, are you strong enough? And, um, and I want to, I want to use a, a real life example here because I had a business on uh, one of my uh, prior companies. I had a, a um, I had a director in that business and I was paying that person a lot of money. And at some point, I realized that that person really wasn't going to get us where we needed to go from that position. And I had a friend of mine who was a very successful business person. And I consulted with him a lot. And he told me for months, he said, you know what? You really need to get rid of that director. You complain too much. At the very least, you need to never mention that director's name again, because I'm tired of hearing about it. And, you know, I was headed to the gym. I remember, I remember this day, it was a Sunday, I was headed to the gym and I was talking to him as I was on my way. And I said, you know what? You're right. Tomorrow, I'm going to get rid of that director. I'm going to fire that person. And the last thing he said before I went in and got on the treadmill was, okay, I hear what you're saying. But you're going to go into the gym and you're going to think of a thousand reasons why you're not going to fire that person. And guys, guess what? I was thinking a thousand reasons why when I was on the treadmill. But you know what? Monday morning, I went in and I fired that director. So my question is, and it was the best thing that I could have ever done for my business at that time. And what I'm asking you is, are you strong enough? to answer these questions and to put in place what you know, because when you answer these questions, you're going to know, you're going to figure it out. You're going to know exactly what you need to do. But the question is, are you going to do it? So let's go over some critical decisions, decision-making processes that we need to, to be doing after we answer these critical questions. One of the ways that we can answer the question is by setting standards. So if we know, we know what we will do and what we won't do, 
we know what we should do and what we shouldn't do. It's going to make it easy. And we call that the grinder. It's going to be easy to put those hard decisions that you need to make through that grinder. You know, so what is it that you're willing to do? So I've had people that are agents that are saying, you know what, I'm not willing to work in this area. Or maybe they say, I'm not willing to go beyond 35 miles from my house. And there are decisions that they can make. If it's anything more than 35 miles, I'm going to kick it off to a referral agent because they're going to do them a better service. Um, So, you know, setting up those standards, because then it makes it easy when you have to make those decisions that you can say, well, these are my wants. I'm not going to go more than 35 miles. I'm not going to work with this specific kind of person. You know, if I, you know, have a three strike process, has that person gone through three strikes? Because that's my set of standards. That's going to make you more effective and it's going to help you to make these decisions. It's going to create your grinder. Consider the consequences. Guys, history repeats itself. If you look at it and you go, okay, um, Let's take that client now as in Ocean City and you're in Hartford County. And you say, well, you know, I'm going to take that person because it's a million dollar beach house. What are the consequences if it doesn't go right? You know, you maybe have done that before and and say, well, it was $400,000, but look at all these problems that it created. And I ended up ruining a relationship. So if you have complications, you know, I'm sorry, consequences, um, you know, or implications from that grinder, you know, making the wrong decision, pros and cons, you know, I always told my kids, I still tell them, you know, make a list, pros and cons. What are the advantages and disadvantages? What are the pros, the cons? Some of these pros and cons have, you know, you have to weight them because maybe one pro knocks out two cons or one con knocks out two pros. So, you know, that's a good way system to do it. And then thirdly, ask. So if you have a decision that you're trying to make, maybe it's something that you're implementing, maybe it's a new technology that you're embracing, or maybe it's a new service that you want to provide, uh, but you're not sure about whether it's valuable or not. Ask. You know, if you ask for opinions, by my, I'd be mindful here, I caution you, don't let that set of opinions necessarily sway you because there are a lot of people that, um, you know, great things that have um, happened in business that people didn't think that it was possible. But what it will do by asking others is it's going to tell you whether you need to tweak it to make changes to it. You know, maybe that feedback um, will be valuable enough to, you know, help you with your decision. Thirdly, this is week three, guys. We're going to implement systems. Very critical. Now we've spent time, you know, um, back to basics with, you know, um, our why and our stories. And now, you know, we're really diving into, um, you know, um, you know, our business, getting back to basics. Now we need to implement them into a system. And these are things that we know we've heard before. I didn't invent these, but really, you know, planning um, and then, you know, blocking time and, and coming up with your action lists and, you know, to do lists and things like that. And then thirdly, tracking the system. So let's talk about planning. Um, right now is a good idea to think about who your target market is. Um your customer, you know, you, you realize that, um, that may change now moving forward with the new way that you're doing business. Maybe you're thinking about who you want to serve that has more possibilities. Maybe you can make more income or you can be happier serving, um, a different type of clientele than you've been just kind of taking everybody on. So, you know, let's think about who your customer is, you know, what you're providing to them or what your value is and then where. 
you know, getting back to the real estate agent that's in Harford County, why would you take somebody to Deep Creek Lake? Or why would you take them to Ocean City and help them buy a second home? Um, so that really isn't your target market. Maybe your target market then becomes, you know, what referral agents you're going to establish relationships for income sources and be the same for them. So maybe that's a target, um, you know, target client. List of services. Now, here's where we really need to get creative because we have our main service and in our situation is real estate. Um, there are a lot of agents that have added things to their list of services that they provide, like property management, um, cleaning services, staging services. Um, you know, there are things that you can do in your business. There are ways to legally make it happen. And, you know, certainly if you're an agent and you're thinking about doing something with selling, um, you know, still remaining an, to be an agent, but you want to add some income services to your um, your list of services that you provide your clients, speak with your broker, make sure that you're doing it properly. But you can do other things for streams of income. You know, I was talking with one of our agents that was going to a trade show and, you know, we were talking about selling a little, you know, having a guide and selling ads in that guide uh, that you can take, you know, home, um, you know, contractor list and, and having them, you know, pay for being in your publication and, uh, you know, check with your broker. They'll check with their attorneys that they don't know we have with ours and it's legal. You know, you have to make sure that you're doing it right. But there are ways that you can make income add to, to what you're doing to, you know, add income. Continual care, you know, what, now's the time to think about how you're providing continual care. You know, maybe you decide that you're going to have a pet setting sitting service and that every client that buys a house from you, you're going to offer that to, you know, that's a way of getting income. Um, and then really, um, how are you, making those referral engines, you know, you know, you hear about, you know, referral business and getting referral partners and, um, you know, maybe you're in the real estate business. Now's the time to reach out to the agents in other States, establishing, you know, better relationships, uh, letting them know how you serve, um, clients and, and making them feel good about sending people to you. Um, and, and that's a stream of income. And then thirdly, budgeting, you know, and your planning goals and forecasts, you know, how much money is it that you want to make? I know it sounds cliche, guys, but do you know, um, you know, really, what, what does that look like? Is that possible right now? You know, if you say I need to make $45,000 a year or 50,000 or 150,000, whatever it is, and you're looking at your current stream of business, maybe there are things that you need to be adding right now to supplement that because you still have to get through the next three months or however long it's going to take us to get back to where we can be supporting ourselves. You know, understanding what your fixed costs are, you know, your fixed costs are your automobile, you know, if you're an agent or a contractor, your truck, I mean, these are things that no matter how much business you do, you need to make a list, no matter how much business you do, these things don't change. And then they're variable expenses. So if you're a real estate agent and you give a closing gift, that is a variable expense. So if you don't have a closing, you don't have the gift. So, you know, understand what's the difference between your fixed costs, things that come hell or high water. You have to pay these, you know, no matter how much business you have. And then a, a understanding what your, your variable um, you know, expenses are things that you'd like to have, but you don't absolutely need to have them. And then really savings, because guys, you know, maybe you weren't planning for something like this, like who was, and, you know, do you have a savings account? So we need to learn from this and understand, you know, some people say, I'm going to take 10% of everything that I make and I'm going to put it away in a savings account. I'm not talking about the stock market either. I'm talking about something that isn't going to be affected by this. Maybe you just need a good old cash savings account at your bank. Let's talk about action lists because after we plan, we have to put these plans into action. 
At Saks Realty, one of the things that we provide is a is a service called Basecamp. If you've never heard of Basecamp, I encourage you to get it. It's free until you get up to a certain amount of projects, and then it's very uh, very affordable. It's, it, the nice thing about Basecamp, I actually threw my daytimer, my paper daytimer away in 2009. I know a lot of people still like to have them. They hold on to them, but I got tired of going places without it. And, you know, so I instantly um, looked for, you know, when I decided and being an appointment and not having things with me, I decided that I was going to go online and something that no matter where I was, it has an app, I can be anywhere in the world and I have access to my, my things that I need, my to-do list. So basically, I want you to have three kinds of lists. This is what we teach at Sax Realty. And you guys, you agents, you know this. And, you know, I can see when you're logged on to Basecamp. And you guys need to really get back to using this. But let's talk about our to-do lists. You should have a today, a tomorrow, and a master list. You can complicate things as much as you want. That's what it boils down to. Things that you can do today and that you should do today, things that can be done tomorrow that will become today, and then things that are on your master to-do list, and you're going to weigh these, and why I like Basecamp is because I can left-click and drag up and move these to-do things around, and not only that, but I can assign them to people. So let's start talking about things for today. Um, You know, Important things first, time block, you know, think about the objective because that takes time in itself. You know, understand if you're going to call somebody before you pick up the phone, what is the objective of the call? What is the preferred outcome of the call? And, you know, how do you gauge that? And then really plan tomorrow before 430. Don't plan your tomorrow when you're completely wiped out at the end of the day. And right before you're going to bed and now you've dealt with the kids and your spouses and now you're thinking about tomorrow, it's the wrong time to plan tomorrow, guys. By 4.30, while you're fresh, while you before you've given it all, start planning your tomorrow. There may be things on tomorrow that you don't need to do. So, you know, let's talk about tomorrow. Um, does it make the cut? You should be looking at your to-do list and deciding do you even need to do it at all? Because a lot of what we do isn't going to get us to where we need to be. And you should just be eliminating it. Um, Don't push things to tomorrow more than two days. You know, I see people doing that. I'll I'll look at their to-do list and I see tomorrow has got the same action. You know, call Todd and go over my 2020 plans. And it goes from today to tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. And three months later, it's still on tomorrow and we're in April. So guys, if you're not, if it's not important to be on your to-do list, get rid of it. Okay. Um, And then let's talk about the master list. Every day you should be doing a brain dump, you know, while you're navigating through your, your business and, you know, you're thinking about things or entering your brain, you know, I have a voice recorder on my phone. I hit the record. And then at the end of the day, I recap it and I put it on my master list. This way, I'm not forgetting the important things that I need to do, like call Melissa at eight o'clock in the morning um, to go over something that she needs to do at 810. So I'm making sure that I'm moving these things around, but I'm putting them on the master to do list. Really, the master list is your brain dump. It gives you the ability to organize and to delegate and um, to delete. Setting up your result systems. So guys, you know, this is really important because we need tracking. We need to know if what we're doing is working. And if it's not, we need to be able to adjust. So what should we be tracking? We should be tracking our sales, our budgets, and our goals. You know, are we hitting our sales numbers? Yes or no. If not, we need to adjust. Are we staying within our budget? Yes or no. Each line item. If not, we need to adjust somewhere. Maybe you were wrong in one area, but you need to adjust in another area. You can't take away everything that so there's no profit. And then goals. Are we hitting our goals? You know, I had an agent say, I want to make a million dollars in the next two years. Well, that's great considering they didn't make $40,000 in their last three years. Is it realistic? 
monitor, you know, is what you're doing being effective? You know, if you're monitoring your social media and you're trying to build your page, is what you're posting working? If it's not, then you need to adjust. You know, understanding that there's seasons in our business, we're really getting crushed right now because this is our big season. This is what we live for. We live for spring. So, you know, what we're, what we're doing is we went from winter to winter, spring. You know, it's not even spring. Understanding your seasons, monitoring your seasons, adjusting what it is that you do. Every business has a season. If you're a tax accountant, now is your season. Um, so understanding what they are and making sure that you're good at scheduling. Timelines, you know, set reasonable timelines for yourself. Um, you know, set up criterias. And now, guys, we're at the end of this meeting and let's talk about timelines. Today, we're going to give you a break. You're going to focus on what we just went over, but tomorrow you're going to get started. Tomorrow on 4-8, that's April 8th for you. And if you're watching this weeks later, set your own date. But for the next week, I want you to focus on back to basics, the content that we've established. Week two is going to be critical thinking. And week three, which, guys, is going to take us to the end of April. So there's no excuse why you can't survive COVID-19 stuck at home. Right now, you're thinking and building. Right now, you're reinventing. Right now, you're coming out of this better than you went in. Guys, right now, this is the time that us leaders and heroes shine. And you're heroes for yourself, for your kids, for your spouses, for your friends. You are a hero. We will get through this. And guys, I got a little bonus slide here. So we're going to make sure that this content is available for you, um, that you can download. And in a minute, we're about to open it up to our agent. So Joe, who's recording this in just a couple seconds here, is going to be taking us offline so that we can get on with our, um, our laundry list that we typically have in our uh, sales meetings with our staff and agents. But this uh, bonus content here is just something that is going to help you on a personal level to kind of get things going, um, you know, get you into some good habits, get you into, um, you know, the right mindset. Okay, so you may want to do this bonus content today. All right. If you're having a hard time getting this content, reach out to Melissa, which is ML for Melissa Levy, ML at saxrealty.com, S-A-C-H-S, Realty, guys, you can figure that out, .com. And also, again, if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so and hit the bell and follow us on Facebook. All right, guys, thank you for your time. Sax Realty, Maryland broker number 607720, office number 443-318-4514, equal housing opportunity.